In this tutorial, I'll be converting one of Jack Darwood's free print and play games for use in Battlegrounds virtual tabletop software. I'm at the designer's website and I'm going to look for a game that I'm interested in converting. In this case, it's the Island of D2 and look for the files to download. So I download the manual, the backs of the cards, the fronts of the cards, get all the files in there. And when they're done downloading, put them in a folder. In this case, I've called it the Island of D. And here are my PDFs. I'm going to open up one of them. And this one only contains uh, a single image repeated over and over. It's the card back for the power cards. So just one of these pages will do. I'm going to open up uh, the PDF in Photoshop and it asks you which page to rasterize. So I'll pick page 2, set the resolution and any other settings, and there it is. Now I just want to cut out one of those cards and in earlier tests I've determined the exact size of these cards so I've already set the selection marquee to pick a fixed size the exact pixel dimensions that I need so now it's just a matter of tweaking the selection rectangle with the cursor keys, the arrow keys on the keyboard to get just what you want then copy and paste the selection into a new file and save that new file to the hard drive. Give it a good descriptive name and I like to save it in PNG format because it's lossless. And then we can close out of these documents because we don't need them anymore. And when I'm done with the file I like to mark it so that I don't need to refer to it again. And we'll open up another PDF. This one has a lot of individual cards that will need to be cut out. So it's just a matter of repeating the process until you've gone through all the cards on each page of the PDF. It sounds like it would take a long time but once you get into a groove of doing it you can do a, a lot of cards in very little time. So again I tweak my selection rectangle to select just the card. I like to zoom in to 200% to do that. Copy and paste the image into a new document and save the document. And basically you just repeat as necessary until you have all the game components. If you hold down the shift key while dragging the selection marquee you can constrain the vertical or horizontal makes it easier to get things where you want them now the original printed game used cards to track how much gold you've accumulated and how many days have elapsed this sort of thing can be handled better in battlegrounds using a incremental counter which is basically an object uh, with multiple tokens assigned to it that you can cycle through. I've actually already made a gold indicator for a previous digital game conversion, uh, the Dungeon of D. So I'm going to reuse that in the Island of D conversion, but I need to make a day indicator. So to do that, we'll need to find a good sun symbol that we can use as an icon. So we go to Google Images look up a sun icon and you'll get all sorts of results on something like this. So here's the sun icon I decided on and I've made a template out of it to match the style of the gold indicator that I had from earlier. So now all I need to do is edit the text layer to label the the days. So I need one through eight. So I'm going to do a save as and I'll make a PNG and 
and just keep editing it and saving a PNG until I have all eight days labeled. And here I've opened up all the day indicator graphics that I created. Um, what I want to do is crop them so that they're as small as they can be. If you double click a layer in Photoshop, it selects all the non-transparent portion of the graphic, allowing you to crop it without accidentally cropping drop shadows or any semi-transparent part of the graphic. With all those graphics cropped, let's take a look at the card graphics that I made earlier. Okay, up here you can see that some of these cards are sideways, starting with this one. Let me scroll up and select all these sideways graphics and open them up in Photoshop because we're going to straighten them out. Now, you could do it all by hand, but let's automate this by writing a new action. To make an action, just click on the New Action button and it prompts you for a name for the action. We're going to call this Rotate Clockwise because that's what we're going to do with the graphics. And we are recording, so let's rotate the canvas 90 degrees clockwise. And I'm going to save the PNG and close it. Then I click Stop Recording. And here you can see all the actions. Let's collapse that. Select the action. Now all I have to do is hit play to perform the action on the next graphic. It rotates, saves, and closes. Rotate, save, and close. So now I've opened up all the straightened card files in the center of the screen and I want to get them into the uh, file on the left side of the screen because I want to give them rounded corners. Now, easy way to bring over those files is to select all, copy, paste into this other file, and close the source document. Again, select all, copy, paste, and close. Select all, copy, paste, and close. Until we have all the layers, all the cards in their own layer, like so. Now I'm going to hide all of the layers, turn them all off, except for the top one. And what I'm going to do is create a new action, and we'll call this Rounded Corners. I'm, I'm now recording, so load selection. I prepared this rounded corner selection earlier. And what that did is it selects the white corners that are going to be made transparent. Uh, to make them transparent, I'm going to press the delete key. And now I'm going to select none. And that's all we need for that action. So I'm going to stop recording. Let's collapse that and select the action. Alright, but this first one's already made, so I'm going to save as. This is the Apple card, so I'm going to overwrite the previous PNG, except now we've got the transparent rounded corners. And we're going to wor work our way down, doing each layer in turn, each card. We're going to give it rounded corners by playing back the action. There it goes. And do a save as. This is the Agility 1 card. Just overwrite the old one. And so on until all the cards have rounded corners. So I've now given rounded corners to all the cards that are in a vertical or portrait format, like this one. But the location cards are in a horizontal or landscape format. So how do we give those rounded corners? Simply rotate the canvas on the master file, 
90 degrees and then we open up all the cards that are in landscape format and we're gonna do the same thing uh, this time I'll put the master file on the right I want to copy each card into the master file and then I can just apply a turn off the other layer and apply the action and there are the rounded corners now we simply save it as we've been doing before overwriting the original file and that's all there is to it so you do the same thing with all the horizontal cards We're now finished making all the game components needed to play. So if we look at the uh, the game's instruction manual PDF, uh, we can see that the cards are broken down into power cards, location cards, item cards, etc. So we should organize all of our media assets uh, so that they're easier to work with. So switching to the finder here, I'm going to make a new folder, call it power cards another one called location cards item cards we'll cover all the same categories mentioned in the PDF and then we're going to file away all of our media assets into these folders now the backs of cards we'll, we'll deal with that at the end let's start off with this one which is the ending card next we'll do the location cards select all the locations put them in the location cards folder Uh, there are three special items that I need to move. There they are. Special item cards. Then we have regular items. And all that's left are the power cards. Those go all, all go in the same folder. Now, the backs of the cards. Since Battlegrounds expects to find the back of the card in the proper folder, we're just going to file away. We'll put, for example, the location card back in the location cards folder, the item cards back in the item cards folder, the rule summary card in the rule summary card folder. Pretty obvious you get the idea. Now this other card we don't really need. So I like to mark folders in red when I'm done with them and all these other folders are ready to ready to go so I'll mark them in green. And the next video will pick up where this leaves off and we'll get all those media assets into Battlegrounds.